I'm asking about the um, $5 million. Estimates say that $20 million would cover just between months of April and June. Montana, which has a similar population, put $50 million in CARES Act dollars. And the Princeton um, eviction lab out of Princeton University rates Rhode Island's response at near zero, whereas Massachusetts and Connecticut both have four stars. Yeah. Um, are we doing enough? Well, let me say a few things. The numbers we have are not as high as what you just said, 20 million. They are certainly higher than five or six and a half. And as I said, this is an immediate next step. I think the right long-term step is a broader program where we can come up to a mediated solution. And so that's what we're going to do. And, and we're going to work with the United Way. We're going to work with the courts. Uh, I'm very open to using more of the COVID relief funds to address the issue. But I don't think the right thing right now is, I, is to just put a lot of money into it. Because what I worry about is you do that, and it gets people to you know the end of June, and then what? So I, I hear you. It is an issue. I'm committed to it. This is a one-month solution, and we're going to come up with a longer-term solution. Mediated solutions. Um, right now, in the district court, there's no right to a lawyer for tenants. Yeah. Who so, come in. so would we be looking at that? Yes. So to be successful, it would have to have a few components. It would have to have lawyer for tenants. The ju the judiciary would have to be at the table. Um, and we would have to have like some uniformity around how we dealt with all of this. At the uh, court, uh, work groups, there were no tenants or landlords represented. The work group was entirely um, judges and lawyers who work evictions. I have all their names, I looked them up. So there were no um, groups involved in the court decisions as to how the reopening should be received. Yeah. We, I can tell, you know, we're in touch with the United Way, with advocates, with Crossroads. If you have folks that you know want to be at the table, then let us know. I have no interest to cut anybody out. One last question about homelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the uh, hotels for homeless people run out on Sunday. Will there be any kind of renewal on that? Yeah. Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, the, um, the program that we've had in place for temporary housing for Rhode Islanders experiencing homelessness as a strategy. There's there's two different pieces to the puzzle, and I don't want to confuse the two. Um, the quarantining and isolating of housing insecure Rhode Islanders that's been taking place at the Wyndham, that is an open-ended commitment, and that was not scheduled to end. Um, there was additional facilities, uh, hotel facilities made available to help de-densify the shelters, and that was previously scheduled to uh, wrap up on May 31st. We uh, have extended that for 30 days to June 30th, and the advocates have um, worked together on a transition plan. Uh, unfortunately, we know that uh, housing, uh, helping de-densify the shelters through hotels is not a long-term solution. It, it is not a sustainable solution. And so we've worked hard with the advocates to come up with a plan that they need to execute over the next 30 days. We've given them that extension so that they have a little bit more runway and so that we can uh, make sure that not everyone who's currently housed in a hotel goes back into the shelter. Uh, but that program has been extended for just one last month.